Idly ho, neighborinos! Un here, apologizing gravely for the complete lack of updates last week. It was a combination of further technical problems and just a very eventful week that was hard to keep up with. But I'm here now, and indeed there shall be time for Parallel 5. Which is really somewhat, uh, well hidden. You have to start off in Sea Bandits as if you were going for Parallel 2. Which is to say, reach the captain's cabin when your timer is warm and lemony. As usual, this results in your catching Bilan in the act, and confronting him right here on the bridge. Nothing we haven't seen before. However, this time, our counterintuitive goal is to lose. That's right, other than the unwinnable Kurt Ligan fight, this is the one time in the game you can lose a battle and not get dumped to a game over. And our loss here will move us right along to Parallel 5. Uh, P5 is very short, as I've mentioned before. It also takes place entirely in one location. But, uh, what it does have going for it is that it has some interesting dialogue, including some from characters that aren't normally very chatty. It's also a much bigger combat challenge than anything that happens anywhere else in the game. Oh, I get it. This is the part where we slowly wade down the Sorrows River and confront all the enemies we killed while the uh, blathers prophetic shit at us. And then at the end we have to take the revival pill. Or just the marathon of death. Either way. Here's our host JJ and our first challenger, Musashi Morganson. This is the one place in the game where they give you his full name, and god, it just doesn't fit together at all. I've told you before, Galleon. I've warned you about your fate and your one-way journey. So, this is really about all there is to Parallel 5. It is an endurance match against a number of, uh... plot-significant enemies, for the most part. Some of them more plot-significant than others. But anyway, it is very much an endurance match because you don't get any health restored between rounds. Uh, you do get uh, your usual two rounds, uh, that is to say, if you run out of health, it will uh, start a new round and you'll be restored, but you can only do this once for the entire gauntlet. If you lose two rounds at any point in the entire run of enemies, that's your ass. And our second opponent will be Indigo, who is apparently a member of McNamara's band. Oh, Hennessy, Tennessee, Toodles, the flute, and the music is something grand. Would that make Musashi the only Swede in McNamara's band? I'm thinking about this too much. Anyway, one other unusual thing about uh, Parallel 5 is that uh, a player with a second controller can take control of your opponents, giving Dark Savior a rather well-concealed little two-player mode. Nothing terribly thrilling, but a nice touch. One of those Easter eggs the kids are always talking about. And so far, so good. The thing to do, definitely, in Parallel 5 is try not to get hit too much by the early enemies, so you have more health left over for the more difficult later ones. If you get off to a bad start, uh, P5 actually can be quite difficult, which is not something you usually say for uh, the battle system in this game. Ah, uh, Carrie makes an early appearance. Yeah, and you deserved every bit of it, you dickhead. Yeah, me and those meddling kids.
Anyway, though I don't have any right now, another thing that is unique to Parallel 5 is that uh, you can actually carry a partial super bar over from one fight to the next. So it can be handy to charge up your uh, meter a bit before going into a new uh, battle. Ah, I thought you'd stun me with the nut kick, huh? I have to say, I like JJ's uh, occasional happy face Maraca wave animation. Very cute. I'm on a bit of a roll here. This is uh, pretty good shape for the fourth opponent. Which often glitches the game. But no consequence to it. Bruno the Master Swordsman. Notice that you never actually see him with a sword. Well, he does appear with a sword, actually, in the Japanese manual art. Uh, a really huge sword, too. You would think if he had a big-ass sword and was a master of it, he'd use it during actual game events. Maybe he wouldn't be so totally schooled by Milan if that were the case, but... As I've said before, that's why I'm not in game design. You would also think the game wouldn't draw attention to Bruno's sword mastery if he never actually showed it off outside of the manual. But hey... Anyway, I used to believe that this was the only time in the game you ever encountered uh, Bruno in this uh, combat system, which would be a nice little extra for Parallel 5, but then it was revealed to me that uh, you could leave Drizzt behind in Parallel 1 and fight Bruno that way. Oh well. Well, I hate to do this, buddy, but I gotta keep moving. Also, sorry to clip you through the fence. Well, we're at the halfway point now. There are ten opponents in all, and it's Spillot himself. Did you ever think I might have a mind? I love... I love... I love you, Garion! Garion Balan Shippers, start your slash pick. Ha! Fly upon your love! I do kind of like the idea of Bilan being revealed as having an inner life, though. It kind of reminds me of the end of uh, Earthbound, although of course nowhere near as well executed or as profound. Damn it! Well, I got to the halfway point with my uh, first round intact. That's not so horrible. It could be better, but hopefully I'll be able to pull this out. have to be rather more careful going forward. I got off to a better start than usual, too. Things just kind of fell apart this round. Oh well. Oh, and the hitting Bilan in the back slash uh, turning your back and kicking him, it does work with his uh, Marathon of Death incarnation. I'm just not very good at doing it, so I don't tend to use it. Anyway, it looks like our next opponent will be old Plan B himself, but we are running low on time, so uh, I'll have to see you next time around for that. Hopefully it'll be sooner than uh, it took to get to this one. See you then, and thanks as always for joining in.